Hi, everybody. It's Trisha and Brad from the Virtual Foundry back with another podcast for you. The date is Friday, March 5th, 2021. The time is 12.08 p.m. And the temperature outside is 43 degrees Fahrenheit here in southern Wisconsin. That's a balmy six degrees Celsius for those outside the U.S. Today, we're talking about a specific application with one of our materials, and that is radiation shielding. So we see our rapid 3D shield tungsten material being used for radiation shielding. To a lesser extent, copper is used for that, but primarily the rapid 3D shield tungsten filament. Um, Brad, tell us how this rapid 3D shield tungsten filament is different from our other materials. Density. The, the, the main de difference is simply its density. And this was a quest. We worked on this for probably three or four years, working on getting a, a lead-free, safe replacement that is 3D printable. And at this point, we've come up with a product that isn't quite there, but it's, it's about 90% of the shielding properties of pure lead. So how does that how does that density you talked about nearly matching the radiation shielding properties of lead, but how does that really benefit the radiation shielding industry? Right. It would be analogous to being able to 3D print lead. Effectively, you can do the same thing. The uh, um, it's used in places, internal parts in X-ray machines. They use it in different type of diagnostics. It's used and uh, just general shielding of just about anything you can think of. We have people in the antenna industries using it uh, for radi uh, RF shielding, but most of it goes back to uh, shielding different types of radiation. So um, different labs that run particle accelerators and things like that are using the material to print very specific shapes for the various diagnostics that they're running. So we threw out a little bit of numbers with tungsten nearly matching the shielding properties of lead. Let's just take a look at some data around that. So a piece was printed in this shape. Um, you can see this step test um, sample piece. And Brad, I know that you have the actual pieces there at your desk. Yeah. Why don't you show us those two? Yeah. So this is, this is the lead piece. And it was machined to exact tolerances to match this piece. So this one is made, this one was 3D printed, and this other one was traditionally machined on a milling machine. They were set next to each other and put on X-ray film and then irradiated by the numbers. Each of the each of the sections of the photo will tell you how much energy it was irradiated by. Okay, let's take a look at that photo. So it looks like we have two different pieces of lead, of machined lead here, stacked up to the 3D printed tungsten filament. Right. And the effect is almost indiscernible. When you get down to it, we, we, we say that it approximates lead just to be clear that it isn't exactly the same, but for most applications, it's difficult to tell the difference between the 3D printed tungsten and lead. Now, as these radiation strengths get higher, we're seeing more of a difference when we get beyond this 180 kV, and we do have data around that. If you're interested in seeing that, reach out and we can share that with you. But we can clearly see at these lower levels that the, the 3D printed tungsten is providing an excellent alternative to lead. Now, what about sintering? Are, have these parts been sintered? Did they have to go through that post-process? These are not. These still contain all of the plastic, so you get this effect and this benefit right off the print bed. You don't. There's no post processing. It's just printed and it's ready to go. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about some shielding uses that we've seen. I know you have some photos to share. <clears throat> here, let me share my photo album here. Bear with, I'm getting closer. There it is. 
Okay, so on the, the top left here are just some other, this is kind of interesting. These are pieces of 3D printed tungsten, like I said, that were laid on X-ray film and then exposed. And what I thought was kind of interesting, these are only one print layer thick. And you can see, and this was printed, this is actually the top. These were printed vertically. So you're looking at it from the side. And I thought it was interesting how, you, how perfectly you can see each of the print lines. So kind of, a, kind of an interesting experiment. And then here's one. This one was printed flat. And I believe this was two or three layers deep. But again, you can see exactly where, where the print lines were as you go through the the irradiation process. This is called a collimator. It's a device that essentially filters out the x-rays that aren't going on the path that, that they wanted. So this, we, we picked this item here because it's such a unique shape and it, it would be extremely difficult to machine. And it's a little bit easier to see why in this image, because each of the fins in the collimator is at a different angle. So very right, difficult to machine. That part would be very difficult. 3D printing, it was quite easy. Yes. Um, I know we made this part in house here. What was the nozzle size we used for this one? This is a 0.3 millimeter nozzle. So, so we typically recommend that people start printing our materials with a 0.6 or 0.8 millimeter. And the reason we do that is for um, a higher chance of success right out of the gate. As you get used to the material, you can move to a smaller nozzle and we can see that it produces really terrific results with that. So this is another part. This was out of an x-ray machine. Um, it was something we did for someone else just as a, as a prototype so they could test it. Um, this is this one is a different type of collimator, but the same concept. Its its job is to get all of the X-rays moving in the same direction, and you can see this also has the the peculiar uh, uh, lens shape to it. Well, with these parts, with the um, different holes and the slats and things like that, uh, what are they doing with the radiation? Um, they work essentially like a lens. They, they focus the x-rays on a specific point. So if you were to draw lines through each of these fins, they'll each point to a, to a focal length and it's probably you know four or five inches beyond here. They'll come to a single point. So they're used for essentially like a, you would use a lens in a camera. This is a lens for x-rays non-toxic lead replacement used for radiation shielding that does not have to be sintered. It doesn't have to go through that heat treatment process. So the really terrific benefits there in its green state, it's providing that benefit. So again, we have data that uh, goes higher than the radiation um, amounts that we showed you here. Uh, just reach out to us if you'd like to uh, take a look at that data. So we're talking about the rapid 3D shield tungsten filament. How else could this highly dense filament be used? Um, it's also being used in situations where you need to, vibration dampening is the, is the quick way to get to it. But it's a way to put a large amount of mass in a very small space. If you're looking to mitigate vibration in a, in a tool that's spinning or moving or you need to balance it, um, a, a situation like that. All right, great. So lots of uses for this material, um, this heavy, dense material. Um, is there anything else that we should know about this particular filament? No, it's interesting. And as people discover it, you know, we put this out there without a lot of fanfare. But as, as time passes, more and more people are finding it and finding different uses for it. So we're hoping, you know, if you, find, if you have a unique application, please contact us and let us know what you're doing with it. Yes, please do. So I'll include our contact information in the comments of this video. Um, so I have one more very important question for you, Brad, and that is why do bees have sticky hair? Uh, no, I don't know. It's because they use honeycombs. Uh, nice. Well, that wraps up today's podcast. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. <laughs>